And it's nice of Ian Rappaport to join us here while he's busily tweeting out and breaking news on a Tuesday. This just came in with the loss of star running back Nick Chubb for the season. Kareem Hunt could step right back into his old job, and you right away say that he's there, that he's visiting with the Browns. So what can you tell us right now, Ian? Yeah, I mean, this is a reunion, I think, that always made sense. Kareem Hunt, I know, had a couple of different visits um, before the season. Uh, Minnesota Vikings were one, and we talked to the Colts. There's a couple other teams. Um, had some visits, had some conversations with. It was never the right money. It was never the right situation. This one has always made sense, and now, obviously, it makes, unfortunately, a lot of sense with Nick Chubb going out for the season on Monday night with a multi-ligament knee injury just honestly just horrific and something you know you just could not hate it anymore um one of the best young players in football um out for the season you know to have someone like Kareem Hunt be able to come in with his old team and potentially step in um, I think it would help Cleveland a lot Ian you raised some great points about Kareem I I agree with you entirely it makes all the sense in the world I have a running back question that's not specific to the Browns or to any specific running back this summer uh, JC Treader the president of the NFL Players Association referenced the faking of injuries by running backs to gain leverage. He then quickly said, and the quote was, I don't think I'm allowed to ever recommend that, at least publicly. And my immediate thought, and although I went to law school, I did not need to go to law school to figure this out, was, JC, you did just recommend it publicly. Well, the league has now filed a grievance against the Players Association, and I wonder if you know to what extent this has concerned the Players Association. Are they worried about this? I think the issue is really, you know, the the grievance, that will all sort of take care of itself, right? And, and obviously there's, you know, him mentioning on, on a podcast, you know, there's a lot of quite raises a lot of questions. Was this something that the union itself you know, advise players to do. I I have not heard that that is in fact the case, but if it is the case, that would be kind of a different story. This is essentially referencing the hold ins and Mm. as holdouts have become more and more, not impossible because we actually had two really high profile ones this year, three high profile ones this year. Um, You know, it's because the holdouts have become much more punitive. The hold ins have become much more favored from players which is essentially saying like, ow, my hamstring, I can't practice. I'm not going to practice until I get a new contract. And, you know, I remember even myself joking on air that when J.K. Dobbins was, you know, on the PUP list to start camp for the Ravens, you know, it was an injury that a new contract could cure. Now he ended up being on the field, not getting a new contract and unfortunately tearing his Achilles. But, you know, these hold-ins are a way for players to have some leverage to withhold their services. I know it's something teams don't like. I'm curious to see what precedent is set, if any, with this grievance. Um, But yeah, I mean, these are, as teams hate holdouts, they now sort of seem to be targeting hold-ins as well. How might this affect Jonathan Taylor for saying, you know, clearly we have the Browns wondering what they're going to do, saying that Jerome Ford is their starting back. We have Sean McVay all but packing a bag for Cam Akers. How does this affect? Let's start first with Jonathan Taylor. Uh, So Jonathan Taylor is different because he actually is injured, was, is injured, right? Like his ankle surgery, which sounded like it went well. I've talked to him on the phone about it. Still was kind of lingering as Cam started. So even though he had a trade request and even though he wanted a new contract, he still was not healthy enough to actually be on the field. And so to me, this is different. Now, would he have practiced? I don't know. I don't know. Um, He might have sort of withheld him himself. And sometimes teams or players are really transparent with teams. Sometimes they say, I'm making a business decision. I'm not practicing until I get a new contract. And nobody wants to step in front of someone's business. So like we saw this with the Panthers, with Brian Burns where Frank Reich was like, I'm respecting his business. I I respect it. So um, I think Jonathan Taylor is a little bit of a different story. He is still in the PUP list for another two weeks. Um, I don't know when we're going to get a resolution. You know, examples like the Nick Chubb injury 
are things that unfortunately will help spur this along. We just have not had a conclusion yet. It's so complicated, though, because if you look at Taylor's surgery, that recovery is supposed to be, what, a couple weeks? It's been months. And then you wonder, no coach is going to say, well, I want to get you back on the field because if you're saying that you're in pain, you're not going to push you through. I just feel like it creates such a such a bad line of communication. And also, people are going to wonder who's telling the truth. Right. Now, they do have, you know, they do have doctors. And if, if in, an ankle is not healed properly, you know, a doctor can see. Really, the issues are like, I have migraines. I have a back issue. My hamstring hurts. Those are ones that are more difficult. But what I sort of hope, not that my opinion matters, is I hope that everyone can be sort of transparent and be like, I am protecting myself so I don't get injured while I try to get a new contract. Please respect me for trying to get money for my family. And I hope, and I think in the NFL, like everyone wants, everyone respects that this is a business, right? And so even if you disagree, like we've seen examples of teams disagreeing on business. Uh, Josh Jacobs and the Raiders are a great example. Great example. I did a long-term deal, couldn't do it. Had multiple meetings where it was, you know, player and team personnel and his agent where it was like, we love you. We want you to play with us. We just have a disagreement on value. At the end, everyone was like, okay, that is okay. We will just disagree and I'm going to go play. Amy Trask, Susie Schuster from What the Football drops every Tuesday. Subscribe wherever you find your podcasts. 